Welcome back to the Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so today I'm going to show you Ryzen owners how to easily and quickly tune up your DDR4 memory. I've never really attempted to create a how-to guide, so I'll apologize in advance if I manage to skip over anything, but yeah, I'll do my best to cover it in the required detail. Anyway, without wasting any more time explaining why you might want to do this, I'm just going to assume that you're well aware of what the benefits are, and let's go get tuning. Making this process significantly easier than it would be otherwise is an AMD memory guru from the Ukraine called Yuri. He's more commonly known as one Usmus. That's almost certainly not how you pronounce it, so sorry about that, mate. But full credit to him anyway for creating the DRAM calculator for Ryzen. It's a seriously impressive tool. Okay, so let's get to it. First off, you want to download the Ryzen DRAM calculator. And at the time of making this video, the latest version is 1.6.0.3. It's a 339 kilobyte download, so doesn't take more than a second. Then you want to download the free version of a program called Typhoon Burner. The version I'll be using for this video is 16.0.0.6 build 0801. It's a 1.2 megabyte download. For both of these programs, you can find the links in the video description. With both files downloaded, extract them individually into new folders. Then once you've done that, jump into the extracted Typhoon Burner folder and run the Typhoon executable. It'll come up with a product registration window. Just click close on that and then the program will open. What you want to do here is click the read button and then select one of your modules. There will be two options if you have two modules, four if you have four, you guys get it. I'm just going to assume here that all your memory modules are of the same configuration as they should be, and you won't be able to do this with mixed sets of modules unless they can all achieve the same timings. Anyway, we want to read the Serial Presence Detect or SPD chip, which houses all the information about your memory modules. Once you read one of the modules, you will be presented with this. And don't freak out, you don't need to worry about most of this information. The main stuff you want to take note of, firstly, is your die type, which can be found under the die density count. For this example, I'm using Team Group's Vulcan Tough Gaming Alliance DDR4 3200, which uses Samsung B-Die memory. Then secondly, you'll just want to note the memory rank, which can be found under the organization title. Your memory will either be one rank, commonly referred to as single rank, or two rank, otherwise known as dual rank, or dual rank for my American viewers. Anyway, in my example here, we have a single rank module. Once you've recorded the memory die type and the memory rank info, open up the Ryzen DRAM calculator using the executable in the other folder that you extracted the Ryzen DRAM calculator into. Under the main tab, you'll first want to select the Ryzen generation that you're using. So Ryzen 1 Gen is obviously first gen Ryzen, so the 1000 series. Then Ryzen Plus Gen is second gen Ryzen, so the 2000 series. And then down the bottom we have Ryzen 2 Gen, which is a little confusing as it's really Zen 2 or third gen Ryzen for the 3000 series. But whatever, if you have a third gen Ryzen processor, this is the option you want to select. There's also support for first and second generation Threadripper CPUs, and the instructions for those are pretty much the same as what we're doing here. So once you've selected the processor, the next option is memory type, and for that I want to select Samsung B-Die. For the profile version, just leave that on V1, and for the memory rank, select one or two. One if you've got single rank memory, and then option two if you've got dual rank, but obviously I'll be using option one as I have single rank memory. Now RAM frequency, or rather the data rate, but let's not confuse the issue, for the RAM frequency option, you want to select memory speed. So for example, 3200 for DDR4 3200. And of course, my memory is rated for 3200, so let's just start there. But you can always repeat the process at higher frequencies if you want to try and push things further. Next up, we have the BCLK, which is the base clock that drives quite a lot of things on the motherboard, including not just the RAM, but also your CPU and any PCIe devices, for example. Anyway, let's not get too bogged down on this one. If you don't know what this is, that's fine. Just leave it at 100, and I believe that's the default anyway. DIMM modules is the number of memory modules or sticks you have installed. For me, it's just two, but if you have four, then change that value to four. Next we have the motherboard, or rather the motherboard chipset. I want B450 as I'm using the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max for this video, but if you're using a 500 or 300 series board, then select the appropriate option. Now, once you've got all that info in, 
maybe take a screenshot or a photo of that so you have a reference point and that'll allow you to quickly settle these values up again if you need to. The next step after that is to read the extreme memory profile of your memory. So for that, hit the purple RXMP button down the bottom and that'll fill out the rest of the fields on the left hand side. Once you've done that, you can then calculate the safe or fast timings for your memory. The extreme option is still under construction at this point, so you can just ignore that. I'm going straight for the fast timing, so I'll hit the orange button, and this will see all 27 fields for the memory timings populated. Now, if you want to play it safe and go with lower voltages, then the safe option will be the way to go. But I've tested quite a lot of memory now, quite a few different processors and boards, and I haven't had an issue with the fast option. But as always, the silicon lottery is a factor for both memory and CPUs. Having said that though, if it does fail, you can just reset the BIOS and then try the safe mode. Okay, so now that we have all that info available on another device or a piece of paper, you're gonna reset the PC and jump into the BIOS. I'm gonna assume you're more than capable of doing this, so I'm gonna skip over how to enter the BIOS. Again, I'm using the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max, so this is how that particular BIOS looks. Yours could be quite different, though generally they all have a menu to manually tune memory timings, and they're all quite similar to this one. So now what you wanna do is find the corresponding fields and fill them out with the timings provided by the DRAM calculator. Your BIOS will have some additional timings that the DRAM calculator doesn't address. So simply skip those and just leave them on auto. Also, if the DRAM calculator leaves some fields blank, just skip over those timings in the BIOS. It won't be a problem. So in other words, just adjust the timings that it gives you. Once you've entered all the appropriate timings, you'll wanna locate the voltage menu here you'll need to input the minimum DRAM voltage specified by the calculator. For me, the minimum voltage was 1.35 volt, which the XMP profile applies anyway, but the calculator recommends 1.36 volts, so that's what I'll go with. There are also recommendations for the SOC, VDDG and VDDP voltages, and these can help stabilize memory overclocks, though admittedly I haven't had to alter these in the past for stable memory overclocks with Ryzen. I'd also recommend manually tuning the FCLK, that's the frequency for the Infinity Fabric, and I strongly recommend setting that to half the memory data rate. So for DDR4 3200, we want 1600 megahertz, and this is what the calculator recommends. So once you've manually adjusted all those settings, simply save and exit the BIOS, the system should reboot and load into Windows. At that point though, you'll wanna validate the overclock by running some kind of memory stress test just to make sure the system is stable. For this, I recommend downloading the free version of Memtest86. It's bootable memory testing software and all you'll need is a small USB thumb drive that you can format. Using the image USB executable, you can quickly create a bootable drive and then run the software. Simply enter the BIOS and select the thumb drive as the boot device. When it loads, hit the configure icon and then click start test. By default, the mem test will run four passes, and for me, this took a little over three hours for my 16 gigabyte kit, but it is worth validating the overclock, so just relax for a bit and let it do its thing. Now, if you happen to see an error, at that point, just end the test. There's no point continuing, so hit the escape key and then reset into the BIOS. And I recommend trying to increase the voltage a little bit. You can go to 1.4, that's perfectly safe. And I'd recommend going as high as 1.45 volts. I've been running multiple systems at that voltage for years now without an issue for either the CPU or the RAM. That said, I wouldn't recommend going above 1.45 volts for daily usage. Once you've validated the memory overclock, you can then load into Windows and do some benchmarking to see what the gains are like, do a bit of testing, or you can just jump in and play some games, whatever your preference is there. And then once you've done that, if you wanna seek a little more performance, it is possible for kits like mine that use these Samsung e dies uh, that you can run at a higher frequency with tight timings, and there may be a bit of extra performance there. So you just repeat the entire process and hopefully you can get it stable at a higher frequency if you wanna do that. And that is gonna do it for this one. Hopefully my how-to skills were satisfactory on this one. Anyway, let me know uh, if you have any suggestions, uh, you got stuck anywhere, or if the guide was good enough and you had success, which is what I'm hoping we'll hear a lot of. Anyway, feel free to hit the like button if you uh, don't mind, and you can subscribe for more content. Uh, also support us over on Patreon if you want to gain access to a few cool perks, the monthly live stream that Tim and I do, uh, exclusive Discord chat, uh, and yeah, just any other Patreon stuff we do like behind the scenes videos. Anyway, 
I'll wrap this one up. As always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.